Now the next thing that we have not seen so far is something which is called a slicer. Now slicer is a filter that the user would have control of and he can change the settings of the filters and the report outputs will get filtered accordingly. So that is known as a filter. So let's go again to a new report page and add a filter. This filter is another kind of visualization provided by Power BI and it's known as a slicer. So if you just click on slicer, you'll get something right over here. And let's create a simple bar chart as well so that we have something which it would be applicable on. So in this bar chart, I'm just going to see my sales dollar amounts. And I'm going to see them uh, across, let's say, simply. Simply say the category. OK. OK, so I have these four categories and my sales dollars amount are plotted against these categories. Now what I can do is I can add a filter right over here, which the user would have control of and it's called a slicer as I mentioned. And I can uh, base this slicer base it again on the category. And now what it allows me to do is I can choose my options right from here. So if I choose the category of rural, the other filter that I have will get filtered on that particular value that I have chosen over here. If I choose urban, I can filter it based on that value again. Now you can see that I'm able to choose only one option right over here. So all these things we can change by going to the formatting tab and let's go to the selection control. So what uh, different options we have, we have single select as off. We have multiple select with control. So what we can do over here is we can control, press control, and then we'll be able to select the other option as well. Okay, if I do single select on, then it is going to convert it to simple single select boxes or circles right over here. I can switch it as off. Uh, I also have an option to add a select all to this. Okay, so I can just click on select all and everything will be displayed. So I can add that option of select all as well by changing the selection controls. Now in terms of items, you can change the color a lot of the items, outline, text size, and things like that. So simple formatting things. Uh, in terms of general, we don't have, we just have the coloring and things like that. Okay, so these are the main controls on that side. Now let's see what we have right over here. So if we click on more options over here, uh, okay, this is just going to take it down a bit. And what do we have here? Let's see. Oh, uh, this is focus mode. Okay, so these are the only options. Uh, there would be an option somewhere to convert it to a list instead of having it look like this. Uh, let me see if I can find that option. There's something here. Clear selection, select the type of slicer. So here, right here, you can see there's a small drop down over here where you have an option. Do you want it to be a list or a drop down? So if I select it to be a drop down, then you have all these options within a drop down and you can make your selections accordingly. Now, what if I wanted to have a slicer based on some date column? So I can use my slicer. So I've added another slicer and I'm going to add some date field to this. So let's go to the date hierarchy over here. And let's say, let's try adding the whole date hierarchy. You'll see that this has been displayed like a drop down. Now, from the hierarchy, I'm going to remove the day, remove the month, I'm going to remove the quarter. So you have all these. Now, if I go to the select the type of slicer, okay, I'm again clicking on this drop down small drop down that you can see over here and I have these different lists. 
different kind of slicers that I can get this converted into. So there are more options because it's a time waste feed. I can have a list, I can have a drop down, I can have something like a between. So if I click on between, it is going to give me this nice little slider. And it is going to ask me the it has automatically picked up the minimum and maximum date which I can choose and I can just slide on this and my values will change. Okay, so it is actually filtering this data though we have not added uh, the year category to this axis, but this filter is getting applied to this chart based on the year as we change the year. So let's select all over here and it will be more visible. The categories are now all. And now I'm just changing the year from the slider, this other slicer over here, and you'll see that the sales amounts are getting changed. Okay, so what I'm saying over here is simply that I want the sales amount between the year 2010 and 2015. Right? Okay, let me again increase the text size. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay. So now if I again go to this drop down option, I'll have some other options as well. So I just chose the between option here. I can go and choose the less than or equal to, which is simply going to be showing me everything which is less than or equal to 2015. So I can change my year away just by simply sliding it right here. So it is now going to show me everything which is lesser than 2008 till the beginning of the data. Right. And if I click over right over here, I can just type in my value as well. Okay. And now similarly, we have greater than or equal to where you'll see everything which is greater than 2009. So you can change it accordingly. You can make it everything that is greater than 2004 till the end of the data. Okay. So something like this. Now let's add, try adding a few more fields to this. Let's add the month. And because it's now going to be a hierarchy, we are not going to get these options, I guess. Let's see. Let's go to the drop down. So you can only convert this to a drop down. So let's go back to here. Over here. And we'll have all these options. All right, so all these options are available for uh, time based axis or time based filters, which we can apply to the slicer. Right over here. Okay, now let's go back to some existing report page that is there and which has a filter. We have something called a sentiment growth opportunities. All right, let's go to market share. Or let's go to YTD category. Okay, so this is uh, one of the report pages that has multiple uh, visualizations on it, as we can see. So there are different uh, charts created on the same page and they're all on the same page. Now, as soon as I click on uh, any one particular value in any of these charts, it is actually going to go and filter the other charts as well. As we can see right over here, uh, if I click on any other value, it is going to go and filter the other values, other charts as well. Okay. So you can see that the values are changing as per my selections on this particular chart. So these are known as visual interactions. That means that this chart, this particular chart is now interacting with the other charts that I have available on the same page. But let's say and this is given by default by Power BI and it's a very useful feature. Um, because it makes it so easy to interact between the different charts and it, it conveys you more information because now we are analyzing by different dimensions across all these different charts and we can focus on on one particular uh, category that we want to analyze the data for. But sometimes it might not be as per the requirement. So we might be not wanting to um, 
uh, filter down the another chart uh, by the particular uh, selection that we are making on the one particular visualization so we do not want now that this any selection on this visualization affects uh, one of these charts let's say we do not want it to be interactive with one of the other charts and it might be the case when you are showing something like trend lines because you do not want the trend line to filter down to a particular year because you still want it to show the trend that has been happening over the last 10 years or something so you do not want your selections on this visualization to affect that particular chart now this can be achieved by selecting whatever uh, visualization you want to uh, I have the changes applied for in terms of how it affects the other visualization. So now I want to change some effects of these visualizations on these other three charts right over here. So I'm going to select this particular visualization and then I'm going to go over here right here at the top, which is a format option. I'm going to click on format options and now it is going to give me one option right here, which is edit interactions. Now, once I click on this edit interactions, what is going to happen is that across all these different charts, I'm going to see some of these options right here. OK, and these are the options that would control how the selections on this particular chart are affecting these other visualizations right over here. So let's go to the first one right over here. So this is a simple map chart. And if I see what are the options for this particular chart, so I select this particular chart and I see that this visualization has an effect of filtering this chart. And that is the only effect that it is having right over here on this map chart. Let's go to some other chart and see. So this is again a line chart and the uh, interaction that the first visualization is having with this line chart is again the filtering option. Let's go to the last chart that we have right over here. And we can see that this particular chart has an option to filter on this chart. Uh, we can also uh, have an option to highlight on this chart. OK, so we'll explore these different options and see what are the differences. So for. Let's say we do not want this trend axis to change, so we do not want this axis to be affected by the selection that we make over here. All right, we still want all the trend axis to be visible for all the manufacturers irrespective of the manufacturer that we choose on this visualization. So what I can simply do is click on this. Filter option. Or rather click on here, which is says which says none. OK, just click on the none option and now any selection of any filters made on this particular visualization will not have any effect right here on this chart. OK, because I have specified none right over here. OK, so for this one, I'm still going to leave it to filtering. And for this one, I'm going to turn on the highlight. OK, so now this one is going to get highlighted or what is what the options we can choose it to be none. Uh, let's just choose highlight. OK, over here. All right, so now that I've made all these changes, let's go back to our page and now let's select one of the manufacturers right here. So now once I have selected my manufacturer right here, what we can see is that I've selected it right here. This particular chart has got filtered by this manufacturer. But this chart has not got filtered because I said that I do not want any kind of filtering to apply to this particular chart and this chart right over here has got uh, again. It has not got filtered. It is just highlighting the yellow marks. So these yellow marks are getting highlighted for the manufacturer, which is when asked. OK, as you can see, the yellow one highlights the when asked one. So it is simply highlighting it instead of filtering it. Now let's change it to filtering and what is going to happen is that it is going to filter only to the when asked till data. So that is the difference between highlighting and filtering. Uh, if I change it to highlighting now, it is going to show all the data, but just highlight on the selection that we have made for this visualization. If I change it to filtering, it means that it will show only the data that is for the manufacturer when asked. Till. So those are the different options that you can use to affect how your interactions work between the different charts.